Hi, and welcome to Control M short video on installing Control M server high availability with PG replication. My name is Zev Gross, and I'm the principal technical support analyst at BMC Software. First, we will review how to install the primary and secondary Control M server. Second, we'll cover configuring Postgres database for replication. Then we will cover how to do a manual failover. And finally, we will go over the options for fallback and restoring HA configuration. We will start by first installing Control M server on the primary machine. Under additional installations, select Control M server installation. I'm skipping through all of the screens as there is no reference to any aspects of high availability with regards to installation when installing the primary. Just keep in mind that ports you specify in the primary installation in the DBO user and the password will be the same that will be used in the secondary. Please note the following considerations regarding high availability with replication. A, HA with replication is only possible with Control M server and BMC internal Postgres database. B, HA with replication is not supported with Control M Enterprise Manager. Oracle and MS SQL is not supported with Control M HA. However, it's possible to achieve high availability through native replication tools, such as Active Data Guard. These database replication tools are not managed by Control M toolset and require assistance from your organization's database administrator, DBA. Okay, now select BMC Supply PG and click Next to complete all the installation inputs. The installation should take a few minutes to complete. After completing the installation of the primary Control M server, we need to register this Control M server to our existing enterprise manager. In CCM, click the plus menu and select New Control M Server Component and have the Configuration Manager discover all the details of this Control M server. Specify the logical name of the Control M server, TBA prod server, host name and port number of the configuration agent, and click Next to discover and register the primary Control M server. Our new primary Control M server is now registered with the logical name DBA prod server, and we see it was added to our existing EM is a regular Control M server with no high availability. Prior to secondary installation of Control M server, there is nothing unique that will distinguish this installation from a regular Control M server installation. Now let's switch to our secondary machine. Now we will start the installation of Control M server and the secondary environment in our high availability configuration. After running setup script, select additional installations, and then select secondary installation for high availability, and then select next. Selecting Control M component and database server. When installing Control M, you can choose between the following components and database options. Control M Enterprise Manager or Control M Server, and between Oracle and Postgres. You must choose Control M Server and Postgres database, as this is the only configuration supported by Control M high availability with replication. Details of the primary environment. When setting up the secondary environment, all installation parameters must match those of the primary environment. To facilitate the retrieval of this information, the secondary installation connects to the primary database to extract the necessary installation parameters for use in the secondary installation. In this screen, you're asked to provide the primary machine name and Postgres port. You will also need to enter login credentials for the database. After installation, this information is used again to update both environments, ensuring that the primary is aware of the secondary setup for high availability. Two database tables are updated in both environments, CDMS HA details and CDMS HA params. To verify the host and port numbers, 
you can run DBU status utility or under CTA menu, database menu reports status on the primary machine and the DBU transactions utility to verify the DBO owner or CTM menu, database menu reports transaction report. DBA password and shared path configuration for secondary installation. The DBA password must be the same for both the primary and the secondary environment. This password is needed to set up the Postgres instance on the secondary system. Additionally, you must specify a shared path, which will be used to transfer PG archived logs during the replication. The shared path must have full access to control and admin user and is maintained in the CMS HA params table. For Windows users, it's important to configure the Windows service control MPG for control M server. In the logon tab, set the service to use the control M admin user. During replication, the archive logs are transferred over the network. However, if there is a network throughput issue or a network disruption, the PG archive logs will be transferred via the shared drive. The shared path also holds status files that are updated when the state of the high availability changes. These files are managed through control M utilities are invoked by the configuration agent. Therefore, the control M configuration agent service should be configured similarly to the PG database service, where the logon tab specifies the control M admin user. We will go through all of these steps once installation is complete. Parameters screen for secondary installation. In this screen, you can see the installation parameters that have been retrieved from the primary environment. These identical parameters will be used for the installation of the secondary environment. At this stage, you also have the option to modify the local IP interface name, which is by default set to the host name. The updated local IP interface name will be propagated to all the agents as an authorized control M server host. The next screen shows the summary of the installation parameters. Click Next to start the installation. Post-installation verification and replication setup. After the installation is complete, you can review its results. To ensure everything is correctly configured, follow these steps. One, verify that the configuration agent is running on the secondary environment while the Control M server is down. Two, in Control M Configuration Manager, CCM, Confirm that the primary environment is now configured for high availability and is waiting for database replication to be initialized. As stated previously, Postgres database replication involves having a shared drive accessible by both the primary and the secondary machine. To initialize replication, ensure that the shared drive is available and has read-write permission for Control M admin user. The next slide will guide you in the process to ensure that both environments have full access to the shared path and that replication is properly started. Post-installation verification and replication setup. After installation is complete, CCM will display several errors related to access privileges to shared drive. Since this installation was done on a Windows box, there are several additional steps required to be able to access the shared drive by Control M. Configuring Windows Services for Control M post installation. After installation, the Windows services are by default configured to run under the system user. However, since system user does not have access to the network, we need to reconfigure the logon option to use the Control M admin user. This configuration ensures that when Postgres runs under the Control M user admin, it has the necessary privileges to access the shared path. For PG replication to function correctly, it requires both read and write access to the shared path in order to move the archive log files and update the HA status files. I have also updated the logon tab for the configuration agent with control M admin user, as there are several status files that are written into the share 
by configuration agent and its utilities. Post installation verification for high availability setup. In Control M Configuration Manager, the CCM, we can see that the primary environment is now configured for high availability and it's waiting for database replication to be initialized. Initialize database replication. Replication requires archiving to be enabled, as this is how the transactions are replicated from one database to the second. As previously mentioned, the archive logs are replicated through the network between the primary and the secondary database. And when the throughput is not good enough to handle the volume, or if there's a network issue, then the archive logs are moved between the two databases through the shared file system. Archiving needs to be enabled on the primary PG database. Use the CTM menu, database menu, management, set database archive mode to enable archiving. Specified mode to on, specify Y for replication, specify path to local drive that will store the archive logs. This is in addition to the shared path that is used when the archive files cannot be replicated from one primary machine to the secondary via the network. See documentation for disk requirements and system settings for using short path names for Windows. To verify archiving is enabled, run DBU status or under CTM menu, database menu, reporting, database status. You will see archiving mode for application is on. Now we're ready to start the replication process. Select the primary control M server, and under the high availability tab, select start database replication. A message will show that database replication is in process. After a few minutes, the replication is complete, and the message will display database is replicated. All control M actions performed on the primary now are now replicated to the secondary. Now we will simulate a disaster on the primary and manually fail over to the secondary. Highlight the primary control M server and select the failover to the secondary icon in the high availability tab. A progress tab will display showing the progress of the failover. Some of the steps require switching control from primary machine to the secondary and may take some time. In this test, it took about two minutes to complete, but the time can vary based on the size of the database. After the failover, you can verify the control M server is running on the secondary. One way is to use the command line utilities to show the status of control M server processes. Show CTM, SHCTM, and show CA utilities will show the running processes and the running configuration agent. Similarly, you can do the same on CCM. Verification of failover environment in CCM. Highlighted bar shows failover process complete. The server is now running on the secondary as seen in the running on column. The current state column shows that control M server component is up and running. The message displays replication process was not started, indicating that high availability is not active. That completes failover to the secondary. Now let's talk about how to recover from a failover and restore to an active high available configuration. Running on a secondary is a short-term solution because there is no way to recover in case of a database failover. The high availability menu above shows several actionable items, which translate to the following options. One, fallback to the primary when primary has been restored. Two, deploy a new control and server machine and build a new second half of the H environment. Let's talk about fallback. Number one, activate archiving on the secondary environment. This is required in order to start replication. Replication is needed because the database needs to be in sync between the secondary and the primary environment. Even if you have recovered from the original failover and your primary database is back to the point of failure, the data on the secondary has changed 
and the jobs may have run. Therefore, we need to sync back and update the data uh, to the primary. Enabling archiving replication will facilitate with syncing the databases. Two, ensure Postgres database is up on the primary and ensure that configuration agent is up on the primary as well and it's running. Number three, start the database replication on the secondary. And number four, then you can fall back to the primary at your convenience as you have a full functioning HA environment after replication was initiated. Option B, deploy a control and server on a new machine. When primary machine is not recoverable, this option will allow you to quickly recreate control M high available environment with minimum disruption to your current working environment. Step one, set the secondary environment as primary. Step two, install on the new machine secondary control M server. The secondary installation requires no downtime on the primary. Step three, activate archiving on the primary. Step four, start the database replication on the primary. At this point, you will have a fully functional, highly available control M environment, and you can decide how to proceed forward. This concludes our video on setting up highly available control M server with PG replication. Thank you for watching this video. Your feedback is greatly appreciated.